Thank you for coming back for episode 3 of Voyage Beyond Earth. If you haven't already watched episodes 1 and 2, I just talked a little bit about the history of the solar system, Earth, humanity and life itself. Now yesterday we used a lot of data from stars that are really far away. So let's talk about how astronomers have been collecting data such as the distance from Earth, luminosity of the star, etc. And even started detecting planets that we call exoplanets. Researchers and scientists sorted through the data of the Kepler telescope can even model the weathers of these faraway planets. So how has humanity shifted from believing the Earth is flat to finding thousands of planets that are not flat, they're definitely spherical. All this and more on Voyage Beyond Earth. astronomers and now space agencies all around the world mainly the five constituents of the International Space Station that's NASA, Roscosmos, CSA, JAXA and the ESA that conduct collaborative research. The International Space Station ISS is the largest artificial structure in lower earth orbit that can even be seen from earth as it passes overhead. The ISS was a joint effort so different parts had to connect in space and it took 137 space flights to complete its construction it also has a diameter of a football field and has been housing astronauts, cosmonauts permanently since the 2000s. There are a lot of satellites launched individually by these space agencies and several other countries like India and China and private companies also have satellites in space, including Google and Facebook. We have been launching artificial satellites since the 1957 launch of Sputnik 1 and we have around 1000 working artificial satellites. But the moon is the only natural one we have. We can't just make more of it. I'll be mainly focusing on the United States as most successful programs and satellite launches have been conducted by the United States. In the news you must have seen all this talk about going to Mars. But our track record to Mars is not that great and only the United States has been able to land 4 landers on its surface. The ESA tried its hand on landing a lander on October 19, 2016 but there was a problem in the systems and poor Schiaparelli crashed. So let's just focus on NASA for now. NASA uses several telescopes, but I just want to focus on four. The Hubble Space Telescope is the largest space telescope that is still functional, having been launched in 1990. It studies the cosmos in near-ultraviolet, visible and infrared spectrum and has led to discoveries such as the expansion rate of the universe. The Kepler Space Telescope is a one-of-a-kind telescope that measures the transits of planets across stars and helps us discover exoplanets. The transit method is recording the brightness of a star and watching for dimming in the light emitted as an object, such as an orbiting planet, passes between us and the star. Watching for periodic dips in the light curve helps us detect the existence of these planets. Furthermore, scientists can even use the reflected light coming back to Earth from this data to record the materials of the planet. This is called spectroscopy. In short, every element has a certain absorption and emission spectrum. Using the recorded light, we can compare it to specific spectrum and understand what these planets are made of. TESS, the Transiting Exoplanet Survey and Satellite Mission, is set to launch in 2017 to follow up on the works of Kepler that unfortunately did break down in 2013, but has still continued to give us results. Also, TESS will study a wider and larger area of the sky in preparation for the 2018 mission of James Webb Space Telescope a telescope with a primary lens of almost 2.5 times that of the Hubble Space Telescope. The JWST will observe objects so far away that we might be able to see the formation of the first galaxies and stars and will of course closely monitor the exoplanets selected by TESS. While TESS will give us the planet's size, orbit and distance from Earth, JWST will look into specific planets and provide us with high resolution pictures. At least high resolution pictures for objects that are millions of kilometers away and even possibly show signs of extraterrestrial life. We've talked about the transiting method but there are several other ways that we can find planets. Let me give you some shocking information before we continue. We do not orbit the Sun. Known as the barycenter, there's a point between the Earth and the Sun which is the center of mass for the entire solar system. 
So every object in the solar system, yes, even the sun, revolves around this point. This barycentric phenomena is exploited by the radial velocity method. This method looks for periodic movements in the star to detect shifts in light emitted from it, called a Doppler shift. The transit method has already been explained and direct imaging is just taking images by zooming in far enough into a star to monitor periodic appearances of small dots on a big screen. Gravitational lensing is another big part where we use large galaxies and high mass objects to bend light around space and time towards us. Lastly, astrometry is the way we observe the changes in other stars due to a wobble in a star with an exoplanet. How exactly do we calculate distances though? Well, this is an easy topic that's taught in high school mathematics. Trigonometry. And you asked when math will be used in real life. By recording the position of the star in January and recording the position again six months later in June, a simple triangle can be drawn and the distance can be calculated. There are several mathematical formulas that have been developed that help us look at stars and measure even the planet's radius just by looking at the dimming in the light. In my opinion, Sometimes, there might be planets that our present-day equipment and technology just can't detect. Maybe in a system far away, two planets with similar orbits and similar masses could have a star in the center, and this would mean that the star does not move as the masses cancel out. Maybe some planets have really, really high albedo, which means they're really, really reflective. This means that some of our methods would not work on such a planet. We've talked a lot about exoplanets and space agencies. But being a proud resident in Dubai, I cannot end this video without talking a little bit about the Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center in Dubai. By 2021, UAE aims to be the first Arab nation to send a mission to Mars. Thank you for watching today's episode. Tomorrow we get into space travel, the future of space exploration, and really understand what's all this fuss about humans going to Mars. Thank you for watching and see you tomorrow.